everyone! Welcome back to my channel and welcome to all new viewers! My name is Olka and I'm a UK-based vet and today I'd like to talk to you about toxoplasmosis in cats and whether cat owners should be worried about catching it from their pets. Before I get to it, please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell if you enjoy my content. It is really helpful. I aim to release a video every week. Let's dive in into the topic of this week's episode then. Most of you have probably heard the term toxoplasmosis. I've known for a few weeks now that I wanted to talk about it, but I've also been wondering if many people actually want to know more about it. So before I wrote this video, I asked my husband if he thinks most people know what this disease is. And he told me he would hope so, as, as a high school science teacher, he talks about it in his lessons. Still, what made me think this video might be needed is that there are a lot of misconceptions around this disease and, unfortunately, because of lack of understanding and certain myths concerning this condition, lots of cats are given up or abandoned when their owner thinks they might be endangering their health. This applies especially to pregnant women. These potential worries are currently also very relevant to me not only a vet, but also as a pregnant woman and owner of two cats. I certainly hope that I will be able to alleviate some of your fears and explain to you what toxoplasmosis is and how it gets transmitted. Remember, if you are worried about your health, speak to your doctor. If your pet displays any symptoms you're concerned about, speak to your vet. This video isn't meant to give you personalized advice, but tell you, generally speaking, what toxoplasmosis is. Right then, toxoplasmosis is a disease caused by the single-celled parasite, Toxoplasma gondii. This parasite can infect majority of warm-blooded animals, including pets and humans. According to Gov UK website, there are around 350 cases diagnosed in England and Wales each year. Although cats are a necessary part of the life cycle of Toxoplasma gondii, the parasite rarely causes clinical disease in them, which basically means these cats rarely develop visible clinical symptoms. The life cycle of Toxoplasma gondii is complex. I couldn't decide whether to include it in my video as it might seem a bit complicated, but as to give you as much information as possible, I made up my mind to add it in. If it's too boring or too much, worry not. Just wait a minute and I'll move on to the next part. Okay then, the life cycle of Toxoplasma gondii involves two types of hosts. Definitive hosts, in which the parasite reproduces and forms eggs, called oocysts and intermediate hosts, in which it reproduces by, to put it simply, making clones of itself. Feline species are the only definitive hosts for this parasite. When a cat ingests infected prey, most commonly mice or raw meat, the parasite is released into the cat's gastrointestinal tract, where it produces oocysts, eggs. Infected cats then poop these oocysts out. Newly exposed cats usually start shedding oocysts three to ten days after consuming infected tissue and carry on shedding for around 10 to 14 days. Oocysts may survive in the environment for over a year. Other animals, including humans, are intermediate hosts of this parasite and can become infected by eating cysts or oocysts. Oocysts passed in the feces of cats are not immediately infectious to other animals. In fact, it can take one to five days for them to become infectious. This is important information when you think about the frequency of cleaning your cat's litter tray. Once an intermediate host, including humans, ingests oocysts, the infection results in the formation of tissue cysts in various tissues of the body. Tissue cysts remain in the intermediate host for life and are infectious to cats, people and other intermediate hosts that eat the cyst-containing tissue. How to find out whether a cat suffers from this disease? Well, toxoplasmosis is usually diagnosed based on a cat's history, clinical symptoms and laboratory test results. Although serology, 
which means measurement of the antibodies, is useful, definitive diagnosis requires cytological, histological or immunohistological detection of this parasite. Treatment usually involves a course of antibiotics and supportive treatments depending on displayed symptoms. How does this disease manifest in cats? Luckily, most cats infected with Toxoplasma gondii show no signs of infection. Occasionally, however, a clinical disease called toxoplasmosis develops. Often, when the cat's immune response cannot stop the spread, the disease is more likely to happen in cats with suppressed immune system, including young kittens and cats with certain diseases, like feline leukemia virus, FELV, or feline immunodeficiency virus, FIV. The most common symptoms of toxoplasmosis include diarrhea, fever, loss of appetite and lethargy. Other symptoms may be present depending on whether the infection is acute or chronic and the location of the parasite in the body. In the lungs, Toxoplasma gondii infection can lead to pneumonia, which will result in breathing difficulties. Infections affecting the liver may cause jaundice. Toxoplasmosis can also affect the eyes and central nervous system, producing inflammation of certain parts of an eye, like the uvea, the retina, or the space between the lens and cornea, called the anterior chamber, abnormal pupil size, responsiveness to light, and finally, blindness. Central nervous symptoms could include a lack of coordination, heightened sensitivity to touch, personality changes, circling, head pressing, ear twitching, difficulty chewing and swallowing food, seizures and a loss of control over passing stool and urine. Acute infections are often fatal, especially in kittens born to queens undergoing primary infections during pregnancy. Reducing the incidence of toxoplasmosis in cats requires measures to reduce both exposure to infective oocysts and shedding of oocysts into the environment. Cats should ideally be fed good quality, commercially prepared cooked foods. Appropriate high temperatures during cooking processes inactivate any Toxoplasma gondicists that may be found and should not be allowed to eat uncooked meat or intermediate hosts such as rodents. Because cats only shed the parasite for a short period of time, the chance of human exposure via cats they live with is relatively small. Owning a cat does not mean you will be infected with Toxoplasma, since it takes a minimum of 24 hours for Toxoplasma gondiolocysts in a cat's feces to become infective, frequent removal of poop from their litter boxes while wearing gloves and washing hands afterwards minimizes the possibility of infection. It is unlikely that you would be exposed to the parasite by touching an infected cat because they usually do not carry the parasite on their fur. Indoor cats that do not hunt or eat uncooked meat are unlikely to be infected with Toxoplasma gondii. People are more likely to be infected by eating meat that has not been thoroughly cooked and unwashed fruits and vegetables than by stroking a cat on a daily basis. Pregnant women and immunocompromised people are the two populations most at risk of coming into contact with Toxoplasma gondii. According to NHS.UK website, if you get toxoplasmosis for the first time while you're pregnant or a few months before you conceive, there is a small risk the infection could cause miscarriage, stillbirth or birth defects or problems after the baby is born but this is very rare. Pregnant women won't usually develop any obvious symptoms themselves. The chances of getting toxoplasmosis for the first time during pregnancy are thought to be very small. Even if you do become infected for the first time during pregnancy, this doesn't necessarily mean your baby is in danger. In many cases, the infection doesn't spread to the baby. If you do get toxoplasmosis for the first time during pregnancy, the risk to your child largely depends on when you were infected. Infection in early pregnancy is less likely to spread to your baby, but if problems do develop, they are likely to be more serious. 
infection later in pregnancy is more likely to spread it to your baby but any problems that develop are likely to be less severe. It's estimated that only 1 in 10,000 babies is born with toxoplasmosis in the UK. In conclusion, the risks of acquiring toxoplasmosis from a cat are extremely small and most people are infected through other routes, like eating undercooked meat. Basic everyday hygiene measures can be taken to reduce the risks of infection from cats and other sources to even smaller levels. To put it very simply, and it might even sound a bit silly, if you were to get infected from your cat, you would literally need to somehow ingest their poop after 24 hours of them passing it within a 14-day window of them catching this parasite themselves for the very first time in their whole life. Sounds like slim chances, doesn't it? I really hope I helped someone understand this parasitic disease a bit more and make them feel more confident that the risk is really tiny, especially with good hygiene. And lastly, thank you for watching. I hope you liked my video. Please like, subscribe, and I hope I'll see you here again soon. Bye!